Hello, everyone. I hope you all are having a wonderful Friday afternoon. Um, thank you for joining us for our Parents' Guide to Study Abroad. Um, I'll be starting our presentation now. So for today's um, presentation, I would like to welcome all the parents and families of incoming anteaters. Thank you for attending our session about parents and family of students who are interested in studying abroad during their undergraduate career. We will be going over a couple of various benefits and enriching experiences that your students can have abroad, as well as addressing like common questions and concerns you may have. Um, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to put them in the chat. I have one of our peer advisors looking over that, and um, you can definitely interrupt in between our session to answer that, or also at the end, we will have time. Um, and let's get started. So I'd like to first introduce myself. My name is Maria. I am uh, actually an alumni of UCI. So I studied here from 2014 through 2018, and I had the wonderful opportunity to study abroad twice, uh, once to England and Manchester and the other to Yokohama, Japan, my junior year. Um, I'm currently the Enrollment and Operations Coordinator here, so I help with application processing and I also do advising. So it's really been a joy to come back to the office that helped me take to send me abroad and now I work for them. So I'll be handing it over to my peer advisors for them to introduce themselves. And let's start with Nicole. Hi, my name is Nicole and I'm a peer advisor at the Study Abroad Center. I also am currently a fourth year at UCI and I major in Korean literature and culture and minor in film and media studies. And I'm also a member of the campus-wide honors collegium. I was able to study abroad in Seoul, South Korea at Yonsei University for both summer and fall of 2019. And my favorite part of studying abroad was being able to try a lot of new things, taking a bunch of classes that were really interesting to me and also were not available at UCI, and also being able to go to a bunch of cafes and museums with my friends. Thank you, Nicole. And now I'm going to introduce our other peer advisor, Dahlia. Hi everyone, my name is Dalia Gomez. I am also a professor at UCI working with Nicole and Andrea. And I am a fourth year international studies major at UCI and I'm currently completing the honors thesis for the honors program in the international studies major. And I studied abroad three times. So I studied abroad in Seoul, South Korea, in Santiago, Chile, and in The Hague, the Netherlands. And my favorite part of studying abroad was actually learning more about the cultures and societies I was studying in. Um, hence my major, and becoming culturally competent. So I'm very happy to be here with everyone today as well. Thank you, Dahlia. So moving forward, Dahlia and Nicole will be sharing a little bit more about their experience as well um, throughout studying abroad. But for now, let me just talk a little bit more about our mission statement here at the Study Abroad Center. Um, our mission is to foster a culture at UCI in which study abroad is expected and achievable for all students. Uh, prior to um, you know, our pandemic times, we actually did have a goal to send roughly about 20% of UCI students um, by 2020. Fortunately, we, you know, that wasn't able to happen a lot, but we still do want to create the biggest amount of like percentage to send students abroad just because it is very achievable for them. Um, we here at the center assist students in participating um, in various different programs, as I will talk about later, with unique academic opportunities, international learning, personal development as well, um, all while they're still working towards their UCI degree. We definitely are, um, aim to ensure that all of our students are able to have this experience and for sure it definitely affects them in a very positive way and it changes their world as well. Um, there are many benefits to studying abroad, including academic, career, and personal. Those are the three major ones that we've seen with our students. So let me start with academic benefits. So with academic benefits, um, the students are still able to work towards their UCI degree by taking classes abroad, whether that's being within their major, their minor, or even within their GE category. So that for sure is something that they can still um, 
they don't have to stop their stud studies when they go abroad. They can definitely keep on taking classes. Another benefit is that a lot of students actually go abroad to learn a new language or to practice a language that they already are learning here at UCI. Um, so, for example, I was learning Japanese and then I went to Japan to further my language acquisition in that area. Let me bring it over to Nicole and Dahlia and so they can talk a little bit more about their own academic benefits. Nicole, would you like to start? Sure, yeah, I'll start. So as I mentioned earlier, I was able to take a lot of classes that weren't really offered at ECI. And not only were they really interesting to me, but they were also really academically enriching because I am a Korean literature major. Korea just had a lot of experts on the topics that I was studying in class. And it was really amazing to have that firsthand experience and get to know my country of study a lot better than just learning it through like a textbook here at UCI. Um, an example of like a class that I was able to take that wasn't offered at UCI that was still really beneficial for me was the chance to take this class um, specifically for college students in Korea who have never written academic writing, however they can speak Korean. And here at UCI, Korean language classes mostly were just conversational Korean. So being able to get that class to teach me how to speak in an academic setting um, not only helped me just enrich my knowledge, but it also helped me prepare for the future if I wanted to do grad school abroad as well. And I'm really grateful for that experience. Thank you for sharing, Nicole. Um, similarly, I also had the opportunity to take many classes um, in my many exchanges abroad. Um, and one of the best things I felt was that studying abroad was that I was able to learn about the history of US involvement from the host country's perspectives. Um, when I was studying abroad in Korea, I took a course um, in South Korean relations. And I learned so much about the history of both countries that um, I had never learned, not even like an AP history or any of my history courses at UCI. And another benefit was that when I was studying abroad in Chile, all of my classes were actually in Spanish. Um, so I was actually able to better my Spanish communication skills as well when I was there. Great, thank you for sharing, Nicole and Dahlia. Moving forward, I will talk now about career benefits of studying abroad. So while abroad, not only do you have um, course opportunities on many programs where students can do internships, research, or volunteer as part of their curriculum as well and separately. Students have opportunities to get letters of recommendations from these international connections. So for sure, even within a career field, like once a student finishes and they're moving on from undergrad, this could be a beneficial network system that uh, propels them in the future with having a letter of recommendation, like, for example, from someone, um, you know, who studied abroad in England, um, I could have a professor from England advocate for me, even while I'm looking for a job here. Um, students definitely gain a lot of flexibility and adaptability. And they're very, they become very creative and problem solving as well. So with multicultural awareness and also effective communication. Um, so they definitely have multitude of internship opportunities. There's actually some programs that already include internships within their program. Um, so they're doing coursework as well as they have a certain amount of hours at a like company or at a, um, for example, Korea has some with like some tech fields. Um, it definitely expands their career paths and broaden their network size I spoke. Um, for example, when I went abroad, I was very much like, oh, I want to be a, um, a teacher who teaches English abroad. Uh, once I came back, I was like, oh, what about doing research? Or um, now I'm in the student affairs area. So for sure, it definitely led me into different paths than just the narrow one that I was looking into when I first entered college. Um, in terms of being um, employability and increased employability. Um, according to a study done by IES abroad, 90% of students that studied abroad actually get a job within six months after graduating um, college versus only 49% of students get um, a job after six months of graduating who did not study abroad. So for sure within that six month span, I can attest to that. I uh, was able to get a job within a month that I graduated. So it definitely increased my employability in that area. 
Um, another study did that 73% of employers say that study abroad is valuable to have on a resume because of the hard skills that you will develop from the experiences that you will have abroad. And this one was done by Amaris Ben. So research and other studies have shown how the study abroad opportunities actually do benefit the students even after. And definitely I can attest to that. There's We have other peer advisors from prior cohorts as well that have been able to meet that six month criteria from that study. And I'm hoping Nicole and Dahlia get to meet that as well. <laughs> I'll leave it up to them to talk a little bit more about their own career benefits at the moment um, and what they got from studying abroad as well. I can go ahead and talk about it first. So as Maria said, studying abroad really gives you a whole new perspective, um, especially in regards to your career. I went into studying abroad with a similar mindset uh, that maybe I want to teach English or just become a teacher in general. And studying abroad really solidified my interest in global learning. And that's actually why I had uh, applied to be a peer advisor at the Study Abroad Center. And it really opened new doors for me because I really do love working um, with students who want to study abroad. And it just really opened a new horizon for me, even though it does sound a bit cliche. I also was able to make a lot of professional connections, not just personal connections. Um, and it really will help me in the future, especially in regards to grad school. Just being involved in campus organizations in my country of study really gave me access to not only professors, but also people who, um, my colleagues who are also planning to go to grad school at the same time. Um, it gave me access to those resources and a lot of advice and tips that I might not have had without it. So I'm really grateful for that experience. And um, there were also a lot of opportunities for me to actually do um, job interviews in Korea, like pretend job interviews, not actual job interviews. And I really, really enjoyed having that opportunity because um, as someone who might be interested in working uh, abroad in the future, it's really hard to find um, test interviews in the States that are in a different language. So that was a really great resource that they did have for me while I was abroad. and. I wish I did take advantage of it a little bit more, but I am really glad that I was able to have that experience. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing, Nicole. Um, I actually got to take an internship when I was in Chile. Um, I got to complete the internship for credit at NGO FEMA, which stands for Fiscalía del Medio Ambiente. That was also the prosecutors, like the direct English translation, um, and they're a non-governmental organization that focuses on amplifying their reach and understanding to the Chilean people on the environmental policies that the Chilean government promises to complete like an in international um, like ceremonies or conferences, but they ultimately fail to. And so I was very eager to do that like hands-on policy work as well. And over the course of four months, I completed over 140 hours um, with them as project interns. So there I learned to better my communication skills as well as my problem solving skills. Um, I also learned to become flexible and adaptable with my schedule and with the many projects I got to be a part of. Um, and these skills are very important for one's career, especially when working with others. And I've had so many opportunities to use all the skills I learned while a peer advisor, um, while working as a peer advisor at the Study Broad Center. So I'm very happy I got to not just learn them, but also that I'm able to perfect them and grow them more as I continue to work. Yeah, and thank you both Nicole and Dahlia for putting those skills that you learned abroad into your own um, positions here as peer advisors with our office. We can definitely see that as well. Thank you. So moving forward, I'll be talking about personal uh, benefits. Um, so we have covered a couple academic and career, but there's also personal benefits of studying abroad. Um, in terms of being more self-confident, being culturally aware and growth and development. Um, so definitely the students not only uh, grow within their ac academia or like we mentioned as well, career with having these internships and interview experiences, but uh, um, as a personal uh, skill, they are more confident. Like with those interviews that um, Nicole mentioned, they're a lot more confident to speak about their study abroad experience as well, or the skills that they already have, presentations or any of that sort. Um, culturally, they're also become more aware since they've 
become so um, ingrained into that culture. For example, when I went abroad to Japan, I did participate in um, living with a Japanese family. So that definitely gave me a whole different perspective from even another student who was uh, not doing homestay. So that open, opened my eyes to like, wow, this is like, you know, the culture in terms of like food, what they're eating day to day, um, how they go about living their day. Um, and as well as just having that growth and um, just developing yourself as a person as you grow as a young adult. Um, I'll also go ahead and leave it off to Nicole and Dahlia once again for them to talk a little bit more about their own personal benefits of studying abroad. Yeah, I can start us off again. Um, I honestly think I received so many personal benefits from studying abroad. So these are just a few of the most important to me. Um, during my time abroad, I was able to make a lot of new connections as well as get to meet old friends and spend time with them as well. I did have some friends who moved to Korea or moved to China and it was really great being able to see them after not having seen them for a long time. Um, but also just being in a new country abroad with a lot of other exchange students helped me make a bunch of new connections. And I usually am a very introverted, homebody person. So the experience really pushed me to go out of my comfort zone and become a lot more confident with myself in the social aspect. So I'm really appreciative of that because without that, I would... I don't think I would be able to give this presentation today. And I also don't think that my social life here at UCI would have been as good as if I didn't study abroad. I also became more independent um, in general and a lot more confident in my overall communication skills. As I mentioned, I um, had to speak Korean in Korea because I, actually I'm not fluent in Korean. I just took classes uh, for a few years. So I was only conversationally fluent and didn't really know anything about like serious topics. Um, so it was really scary going abroad to a country where you know everyone isn't fluent in English and you might have some language barriers or translation issues. I actually did struggle quite a bit when I was abroad because I am someone who has a lot of health issues naturally. So I did have some times where I needed to go to the doctor and I needed to get some checkups. I initially thought it'd be really scary. However, being put in that situation really helped me grow as a person. And now I can actually do all my health uh, business, schedule appointments here in the USA by myself instead of asking my parents to do it. And as an uh, additional benefit, I was also able to learn all the vocabulary I needed in Korean to talk about like the health issues I was having and to get the proper care that I needed. Um, we do have quite a bit of questions in the chat about like difficulties um, that we have had or challenges while studying abroad, but I'm sure we'll touch upon that later in the Q&A. Thank you, Nicole. Go ahead and talk about my personal benefits as well and similarly to Nicole I don't think I would have grown as much or as quickly had I not been abroad um, you know the first picture I'm at Machu Picchu I never would have dreamed I would have climbed like I would have hiked to Machu Picchu so I became really independent and my confidence grew and also like Nicole I also made so many international friendships and in every exchange I went on um, we regularly keep in touch with doing zoom calls like for birthdays and it's always nice to see everyone like on a screen if we can't see each other in person um, but I think my favorite benefit that I grew, um, which I grew, was that I am now culturally competent. So I may not know the language of the country I'm visiting, but by watching and mimicking the mannerisms, I am able to understand, communicate, and effectively interact with people across different cultures. And I think my experience in South Korea was um, like the best example of that. Um, I know very few Korean words. I knew five words when I first went there. I knew yes, no, hello. Thank you, and Hua Jangshil, which is bathroom. Um, <laughs> so I don't think I would have survived had I not um, watched as like observed the people as much as I did. But I'm really glad that I did that because now I can go to any country and I've been to multiple countries since then. Um, and I, again, I don't know the language, but just by mimicking how they react or how they behave, um, I'm able to effectively communicate what I need and what I want when I'm abroad. So I don't think I, I mean, these are just benefits that I really just got just by traveling by myself or with friends as well abroad. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. 
Yes, in terms of, again, personal development and growth, I think most of our UCI students, it's typically the first time that they're actually traveling even by plane. So even that first step of going to the airport and stepping into an airplane by themselves for the first time already is like an experience that they're growing, they're doing this by themselves. Um, and we don't say by themselves just because we do orient them before they go abroad. So they might buy tickets with others within their program to go abroad. But just, you know, just putting into perspective as well, it was my first time ever even being on a plane. So it was very definitely scary to do, but I remember having the mentality of like, I don't want to be shy or um, I don't want to like shy away from this experience just because I'm a little bit scared of like flying across, you know, our country for 11 hours. <laughs> so for sure, um, even that those tiny little steps that our students make definitely makes them grow into the bigger people that they are after they come back. In terms of program options, we do have a lot of program options for the students to choose from. Um, we have UCEP programs. So this is where majority of our students go through. This is a program provider that provides programs for all the UC system. So um, some of our students might be in a like cohort of students going abroad to Korea, for example, as Nicole did and Dahlia did. Um, but there's other students from like, let's say UCLA or UC San Diego that are also within their little cohort and they go abroad and they have that experience together. Um, and they, there is also independent programs. So UCAP has over 150 programs that students can choose from, from basically all the continents, except obviously Antar Antarctica. Um, but uh, independent programs, if they didn't find, let's say, for example, a very unique opportunity that UCAP is not offering at the moment, and another program is like IA, I, sorry, AIFS um, or CIE or any of these other independent programs providers, they can go through that as well. Um, we are also currently working on other um, on other options for the students, such as bilateral exchange and faculty led. So UCI currently is working on that on how to even have um, even shorter term programs such as faculty led, which could be between like two weeks to a whole month of the students going abroad and taking like a shorter class with a professor from UCI, but they have this whole experience while um, going in a class abroad with to a particular country. Um, and there's also actually other UC programs. So for example, UC Davis, UCLA, and I believe UC Berkeley also has summer option programs where students can um, look through their programs that are typically, these are faculty led or bilateral exchange, but our UCI students are able to even participate in those as well. So definitely know that there is a lot of options. Um, and one thing that we definitely recommend is for as soon as your student comes into UCI um, is definitely set up a virtual advising appointment during this virtual environment. Or once we go back on campus, they can definitely do just like a walk in and we go over the options and kind of look, um, help them look for what best fits them and their needs and goals, whether it's they want to go abroad for a specific internship um, opportunity or they want to take classes within their major that um, they know they can't take here. Um, so definitely uh, we are here and available to help the student look for those options. In terms of cost, a lot of students actually come in asking, is it affordable? So um, UCI is known to be a um, low income student uh, school. So there's a lot of students who receive financial aid um, through our institution. And many of them have the worries of like, mm, well, study abroad sounds great, but will I be able to, you know, financially afford it? And the answer is yes, it can actually even be cheaper than UCI. Um, so many students who receive financial aid, um, their whole package throughout the academic year actually goes with them. So that means that um, all the tuition and all the aid that they would have gotten to cover the cost here at UCI can cover the cost abroad. And as we mentioned as well, it could even be cheaper um, for those students who don't receive financial aid. Uh, for example, here we have um, the example that at UCI, 
a on campus year is roughly about 34,252. But if they choose to go abroad for a whole year in Korea, it actually is 28,750. And if you also see in terms of weeks, they actually get 10 extra weeks of instruction for a lower cost as well. And looking at a different option, if the student wants to do the fall quarter here at UCI, but also goes to Korea for the spring semester. So in Korea, their spring is from January to um, roughly about May or June. So they would be out for winter and spring of here. It's actually even cheaper as well uh, in comparison to the whole year here at UCI. And it's about 25,700. So for sure, it's very workable. Um, again, there's even scholarship opportunities um, that go that can go abroad with you. Um, but let me first hand it over to Nicole, Nicole and Dahlia if they want to share a little bit more about how they um, supported themselves financially abroad. Yeah, so I can go first. Um, when I went abroad, I personally thought I was going to get myself fully funded and that just wasn't the case for me um, in my personal situation. However, I did ultimately spend less on my time abroad than I do spend here at UCI. And um, that was because I did apply to every scholarship that we list on our study abroad website, um, which is a really great resource for anyone who is interested. And I also did some research on my country and made sure that I was able to save in ways, um, in additional ways, other than financial aid or scholarships, just in case I didn't get those. Um, some of those ways were eating cafeteria meals a couple times a week instead of eating out or um, buying a bus card so that my fare would be reduced and also checking for discounted plane tickets early on before I went abroad. And that ultimately helped me save a lot of money um, so I could afford my program, even though I didn't get the amount of scholarships and aid that I thought I was going to get. And in the end, it ended up being really affordable because I did take into account that the cost of living in Korea was really different than the cost of living here in the States. So you could buy your whole day's worth of food on like three US dollars and still survive and be full. So it was a really um, great thing for me just because I was a little bit nervous that I wasn't going to be able to fund it since I didn't receive um, every scholarship I thought I was going to. But in the end, I was able to make it work and I spent a lot less than I would have if I stayed at UCI. Thank you for sharing, Nicole. Um, similarly, I also was really dependent on, I'm really dependent on financial aid and I did apply to a lot of the scholarships. Um, I also didn't get them, all of them, the, the ones I wanted to get, um, but I did receive the Benjamin A. Gilman Scholarship, which helped pay for actually all of my meals and like extra travel that I did in South Korea. And so I traveled a lot. I even went to Japan for a weekend. Um, and so that, that scholarship covered all of that. So I wasn't really too concerned when I was in South Korea. Um, however, when I was in Chile and in the Netherlands, uh, they were pricier. Uh, just the cost of living in Europe and the cost of living very similar. Um, so it was a lot it was a lot more expensive and so like like nicole um i had the mentality of living like a local and so i would look into like transportation cards any discounts for students um there was a lot more in europe than there was in chile just because in chile it's a longer bureaucracy um the like the lines to apply for things are just super long and so it wasn't really worth it even though i was there for six months uh, just because i wouldn't receive it on time or like while well, i was actually a student there and so i didn't bother applying for those things when i was in chile um, and in the Netherlands, I did, and I got a lot of discounts. Um, and in both countries, I actually cooked my own meals. Um, me and my friends, uh, I became really close with my like apartment mates and my roommates. Um, and so we would like dine together, and like we'd all like make like potluck dinners, and so that was really nice. But when I was in Korea too, I was eating out like all all my meals. It was a lot cheaper than actually just cooking in South Korea. Um, but my trips, like I was saying earlier, um, in Chile and then in the Netherlands were just more expensive and there was actually unforeseen events um, in both exchanges, on both exchanges. So I did take out a few loans um, and loans aren't typically the most advertised, like we haven't really mentioned them. Um, and they're not the most favorite option either for financing personal experiences. But I believe that both my time in both Chile and the Netherlands uh, was worth going into debt a little bit for. Thank you. Thank you, Dolly and Nicole, for sharing that. 
Um, and we do have resources on our website about scholarships and other ways to fund yourself. So again, that would be a resource to definitely look into or ask us about more during a advising time. Um, just to wrap up a little bit more, I'm going to talk a little bit more about health and safety. Um, so in terms of health and safety of the students from UCI, it is our number one priority. So we do have supported um, staff on site and so like on site at the host institutions as well as other program um, staff as well. So for example, UCAP, there would be UCAP staff at certain host countries so that if the student has questions or needs a special contact, there are people there to help support them throughout any challenge or struggle that they might have to go through. Um, in terms of COVID-19, uh, currently we are not sending students abroad if deemed unsafe. Currently, um, our summer programs did get canceled just recently this week. Um, and that's just based on CDC guidelines and regulations, as well as any other country border closure. So we are constantly looking at how fast all these regulations are changing and in terms of whether or not it would be safe for our students to go abroad. So sometimes even as well, like if an independent program is able to let the student go abroad, but UCI is currently like it is very unsafe for our students to go abroad, then at the end of the day, the student would um, stay here just because um, it, they're a UCI student first and we do care about their health and safety. Um, programs are continued to programs are continuing as planned for fall 2021 and onwards. Um, but again, decisions might be made as the time approaches and just how fluid and how fast the situation changes um, and ongoing. We're just going to keep on seeing how that happens. Def definitely, that is why we also advertise it studying abroad as. Um, it is very important to plan ahead. So as uh, students who are coming in as freshmen, definitely plan ahead into looking into studying abroad for either their sophomore, junior or senior year, just because um, we don't know what could happen and we still want you to have this wonderful opportunity. Um, and we also have pre-departure preparations. So that, that means that even after a student gets accepted to go to a study abroad program, we also still have orientations um, where we help the student um, navigate through that world of what they're gonna go into, such as like finances, like we mentioned, or anything else related to health and safety while they are abroad and what emergency contacts, if anything were to happen abroad and um, any just type of support that we can provide um, as much as possible while the student is abroad. In terms of resources, we do have our study abroad website, which I listed here. Feel free to definitely go visit it afterwards. Um, and we also would like to show you our other resources, which are our YouTube channel and our Instagram, um, and even signing up for our newsletter. So we have a weekly newsletter where we um, showcase our weekly events or scholarship opportunities or anything else that might be happening for the week within our center. We do have virtual advising, so you can also sign up for virtual advising through there or through our website. And in terms of our YouTube, we do have playlists on how to apply to study abroad, anything between application process, looking for courses, or even looking for a program that best fits you, um, along with even returning stories as well. And for UCI, um, sorry, for Instagram, we also have um, kind of like a little newsletter in the sense where we advertise our um, sessions that are happening or also other returning stories via pictures. So I did want to leave some time for um, if we might have any questions. So I'm going to, uh, that's why I kind of wrapped it up a little bit quicker. Um, but I would like to go back and see if there's any questions at the moment that we may be able to answer. Yeah, we have quite a few questions um, in our Q&A. And the first one that was asked a while ago was, did you all encounter any challenges when studying abroad? Um, so I guess I'll start. But I did mention that I had some health issues when I was studying abroad, and that was really scary for me. However, as Maria mentioned, there are, are a lot of helpful UCAP staff on those programs specifically. Um, 
that can help you with your every need if you really need them to. So I was able to contact them and they were able to give me some translations, give me resources and some staff even offered to go with me to the hospital if I needed, if I was scared. And I was really grateful for that because um, I don't even like going to the hospital by myself in the States. So in Korea, it was really scary as well. Um, and another really big challenge for me when studying abroad was um, I was really, really scared that I would miss out on everything here at UCI and I would grow distant from all my friends, uh, from my family, because the time zone difference is pretty big, that I wouldn't be able to talk to people. And when I come back, it would just be really difficult and I would feel alienated from all my campus organizations and the people I already had bonds with here at UCI. However, when I was really worrying about that. I don't think I took into account that technology is really amazing. <laughs> so technology ultimately helped me keep in touch with all the people here at UCI, um, all the organizations I was involved with. And it was still really easy to give people a phone call or a video call or chat and message when um, I needed a friend to talk to because I was feeling homesick or I even was able to apply to be on the board of a club while I was abroad. Um, and that was when everything was still in person. So having like online interviews and online meetings was a really foreign concept. But now with the introduction of all this technology and Zoom, it's really easy for you to stay in touch with everything at UCI. So it's really not that big of a concern, even though I personally made it a really big deal before I went abroad. Nicole, um, I also did have like a health concern when I was studying in South Korea. Um, I realized that I needed um, glasses, like a new prescription when I was abroad. Um, and so I like the UCEP center really helped me book my appointment. Um, however, I wasn't aware that I could ask for more resources. Um, I just kind of took what they gave me and was like, all right, I'm going to go to my appointment. Um, I am also a, like I have a really friendly demeanor, so I, I don't have a problem with asking strangers for help. Uh, but luckily, there were a lot of signs in English. So I didn't have to ask as much for help. But the nurses at um, Leonce, like University Hospital, right next to the, ho the hospital, right next to Leonce, the University, um, there was a lot of English speaking um, personnel that helped me find my way. And if I didn't have like the correct like information, they were really helpful either way, helping me like navigate through the hospital. Like one of the nurses actually took me for like a five minute walk to find where I needed to be. Um, and even there, like I, by the time I was uh, getting the help I needed, I had already learned some Korean. And so I was more or less able to communicate with uh, doctors who were helping me. And when I was studying abroad in Chile, there was actually a social crisis halfway through my time there. And so my whole life got disrupted, um, the whole schedule, my routine, everything changed. Um, but the UCEAP center, again, they were so helpful. I had an appointment with like the director of UCEAP there. Um, and she was amazing. Um, she helped me like quell my concerns and it was really, really nice to talk about like my concerns in a really open space and not necessarily feel judged, but still feel like she was holding my hand in the sense that she was helping me navigate what I wanted to say um, and my thoughts, because this was something I never experienced um, being in the Western world. Um, it's not really something that we have to concern ourselves too much about, but abroad, it's very something very common that I wasn't aware. And so it was also like a great learning opportunity for myself. Thank you for sharing that. I think we might have room for maybe one to two more questions. If we definitely didn't get to your question, feel free to always reach out to us via email at studyabroad um, at uci.edu for sure. But Nicole, do you wanna read off the next one? Sure, uh, the next question is, by chance, were you able to discover any new potential careers or jobs while participating in study abroad programs? Um, we did mention it briefly before, but one, great opportunity that opened up to us after studying abroad was being able to work at the study abroad center. And that is something that I personally really am happy that I was able to do because I do enjoy working for the study abroad center. But also um, there are a lot of chances for you to do internships or research or field study while you are abroad. And that does open a lot of new opportunities for potential careers or jobs. You can make a lot of professional connections and just have a lot of professional development in general. Um, I also did mention that they hosted like job interview workshops while I was abroad that um, 
international students or exchange students had access to. Um, that's one thing that it is very program specific, but each program is going to have its own benefits and its own ways that it can help you develop um, professionally or find new ways to discover new potential careers or at least make connections that will be helpful for you in the career world. Beautifully said, Nicole. Um, <laughs> I really don't have anything to add for that. Um, just because I already talked about how I did my internship. There was an internship with my program. Um, I'm wondering actually if we can move on to the other question. Uh, is that okay, Marie? Yes. Yeah, okay, so it yeah. says, I imagine that most of the study programs structured are structured for GE uh, classes. What percentages are offered for higher level courses, such as those within a major? And so it's actually an exception about studying abroad. You can definitely complete um, upper division courses. I mean, I studied abroad three times and each one actually like helped me progress through my major. I'm graduating in four years still. In my first year, I changed my major like three times. Like I'm still on track, I'm doing well. Um, and I was even actually able to complete both my regional focus and my functional focus for my international studies major. And so it's my regional focus was East Asia and my uh, functional focus was issues and institutions. And so that's about eight courses that I needed to complete that I did abroad. Um, I was also able to complete a few GEs. Um, so yes, you can do GEs as well. And I was even able to complete my foreign language requirement that's necessary for my honors program. So that's up to level 2C, which is actually about six courses at UCI level um, and I didn't do the five previous I just did the two because I was already fluent so when I did the intensive language program in Chile that like it was a three-week program and I booked like I took away six classes that I didn't have to take anymore yeah yes. just to add on to Dahlia um, I actually only did upper division or high level courses while I was abroad. I did it for both my major and my minor. For my major, it was easier because I was taking um, Korean literature classes in Korea. However, my minor film, it was something that I thought would be more difficult to find upper division film classes while I was abroad. However, it was actually really easy. There were a lot of opportunities um, open for me, not just in Korea, but in a variety of other countries as well. And I did have a lot of friends who were also able to do um, their engineering internships or um, like math and economics programs while we were in Korea. And those were things that I never thought they would offer in English. However, they did and they were able to make the most of their experience. And just having those opportunities for research and field study are really great as well if you can't find um, a degree requirement that you want to fulfill. It still gives you the chance to have that global education experience. Very well said, Nicole and Dahlia as well. Um, sometimes some students do choose to take um, their GEs abroad just because they want to have a different experience than the ones that are taught here at UCI as well. So just know that even um, if a student is in a STEM major, which usually as we try to do as much as possible, dispel the misconception that STEM majors can't go abroad because their classes are very specific. Um, there are def definitely loopholes even within their majors to definitely take classes abroad and still be working on their major. So thank you. Is there one other maybe shorter question that we can answer within this one minute? Yeah, there's a question asking, does studying abroad interfere with graduating on time in four years? And I think we kind of briefly talked about this, but it doesn't have to interfere with graduating on time. You can fulfill GE's degree requirements for your major or minor, or if you have required field study, you can do that as well. Um, it is really important to look at your academic plan and start thinking about that early on so you can see where studying abroad could fit in with your um, four years at UCI. However, as Dahlia said before, sometimes it is worth taking a little extra time. Um, it just depends on you and your personal goals. I personally think that if I had the chance to study abroad again, I wouldn't mind even taking another year just to have that opportunity, maybe take another, maybe double major even, just because you do learn so much from being abroad. Yeah. Well, we have nine seconds left, so we just really wanted to extend our thank you for attending our session, and we hope to see a couple of your faces in one of our advising sessions.